if you're watching this video, you either have some questions or you're absent and just trying to, to catch up. Remember, the goal is to get the variable all by itself. So this x right here has two numbers with it that we want to get rid of. The reason that I'm not paying attention to this 11 is it's on the other side of this equal sign, and so it's like a boundary line. And all we want to do is get this x all by itself, so the 2 and the 5 are not there with it anymore, and x is going to equal uh, the answer, whatever number that we're going to have on the right side of this equal sign. But to do this, um, we have to use inverse operations. That's just a fancy word for doing the opposite. And uh, whatever you do to one side of this equation, like if you do something to the left side, you're going to have to do the exact same thing to the right side. So there's not a lot of thought that's happening over here on the right side. We're just copying whatever we're going to do to the left side. So let's clear the screen and let's go through and solve this equation. Here's a simple rule. Uh, anytime that you're looking at getting rid of uh, the two numbers here with that variable, get rid of any number that's being added or subtracted to the x. And remember, when you see a number that's right up against a letter, that's the same thing as 2 times x. It's just they're not writing the little uh, multiplication symbol there. Okay, So the add subtract number here is 5, and that would mean that we would just say hey, minus 5, and that's what we have done to the left side of the equation. Now we've got to do that exact same thing over to the right side. What you do to the left side, we do to the right side. Now this cancels because 5 minus 5 is 0, and then that lets this 2x come straight down. 11 minus 5 is 6. This formatting is really important here that you write the subtraction vertically underneath what you're subtracting it from. It looks like an old-fashioned first grade problem, doesn't it? Now, the 2 is multiplying the x, and that's the next number we need to get rid of, so just divide this by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and there's no need to write that invisible 1 there. But what we did to the left side of the equation, we do to the right side. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. Here's your answer. Now, the check is nothing more than just trying to figure out, did I have the right answer? We're going to take our answer, what x is, x equals 3, and we're going to plug it back into the original equation just to see if it works. Now, I'm going to put the 3 in parentheses so that way we can see where the x would have been, but no, it's still supposed to multiply the 2 like it's supposed to. And we just run it through the paces to see, hey, does it work? 2 times 3 is 6. And we know that 6 plus 5 equals 11, so yeah, it worked. Now we're going to throw one more twist in here, and that's almost the, the end of it. Um, whenever you see subtraction, okay, whenever that you see subtraction in a problem, I want you to change the subtraction sign to a plus, and then the next number to the right of it, I want you to change the, the sign of it. So since it's a positive 11, I'll make it a negative 11. That's just going to help us later on, trust me. Okay, not in this lesson, but a few lessons down the road. Now, the 9 is multiplying. The negative 11 is being added, so we'll get rid of this. And so what's the opposite of a negative? It's a positive, so just add 11. Negative 11 plus 11 is 0. And see, that's going to cancel the plus negative 11. It's, it's, it's gone there. That's what we've done to the left side. Now go to the right side and do the same thing. The 9y comes down and we get 18. Now we do the exact same thing that we were doing before. The 9 is times in the y, so we'll divide this by 9, and that cancels it, so the y is free. But what we did to the left side of the equal sign, we now have to go to the other side of it and do the same thing, divide by 9. So 18 divided by 9 is 2. That is our answer. And So now let's go check to see if we've got it right. Now, you do have an uh, an option here. You can go ahead and, and leave what the problem was originally, 9y minus 11, or you can go ahead and make it into plus the negative and see how that works out. But 9 times 2 is 18. 18 plus negative 11 is indeed 7, so we have the right answer. This problem right here usually frustrates people because they're not for sure what to do here, but think about what's happening here. This is x divided by negative 2. And this is how we showed division back here on the previous problem, right? 9 times y, how do we get rid of it? Divide by 9. So we're showing division right here when we did this. 
and that's what they're showing us here, x divided by negative 2. So get rid of our add subtract number first. Again, make sure you get that um, subtraction line right there, so that way it just it, it makes it a uniform appearance. It's really important to show work properly. The x divided by negative 2 can come straight down here, and we're just going to write it exactly how it is here, and it's usually going to take up like two lines on your notebook paper, and that's okay. And then if you want, you can kind of have this writing the line right here, so that way it looks like this 14 is like right in the middle, and that kind of helps keep things nice and neat. Now, this is also important. How do we show how we do the work to get rid of this negative 2? It's dividing by 2, and what I want you to do is I want you to put parentheses around both sides of the equation like this. And now, whatever number is below this variable, we're going to use it to multiply the left side. So since this is negative 2, I'm going to put a negative 2 here to the left of the variable. And I'm going to put it in parentheses, and this cancels out. Now I'm going to come over here to the right side of the equation, and I'm going to multiply this by negative 2 also. Remember, what we do to the left side of the equation, we do the same thing to the right side of the equation. The x is free. And this gives us the answer of negative 28. So this is our answer. Now we go check. And you can see that the negative 28 divided by negative 2 would get us the 14. And 14 plus 7 is indeed 21, so we're correct. This has a few things that makes it an interesting problem, and that's why it's in your notes. Uh, first off, we have a decimal right here. Also, it's got the fraction set up, you know, m divided by 2.05, just to give you a little bit more experience. And then right here, we have the subtraction sign here, so we want to handle that the same way we did uh, problem number two, you know, make that subtraction into add the opposite or plus the opposite. And then the last reason is, is that this is the first time where the variable is on the right side of the equal sign. Remember, this equal sign is kind of like the halfway point. There's everything to one side, and there's everything to the other side. So, we need to focus on this m and get rid of the numbers that are on the same side of the equal sign with it. So, we'll get rid of these two. So, we don't really care about the negative 15. It's just stuff that's going to have stuff done to it, but we want to get rid of these two. Well, let's clear this and let's think our way through it. What number do we get rid of first? Definitely this one. But remember, this is a subtraction. So, make it into add the opposite. And now we can get rid of it by adding plus 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And now we go to the other side of this equal sign, and we do the same thing that we did right here in blue, right? So we get negative 13 equals m divided by 2 and 5 hundredths, or 2.05. We'll switch to a different color here. This is m divided by, so we're going to put parentheses around this whole entire side of the equation, and we're going to put parentheses right here, too. This 2.05, I'm going to have it multiplying by 2.05 up here, high, with where the m is, and this is going to get parentheses, too, to show that these two things are multiplying each other, and it cancels out, and we're left with m free. But since we multiplied the right side of the equation by 2.05, we're going to do the same thing over here on the left. Let me scoot this over to get some. Now, this is what's going to happen on your notebook paper at times. You have to be a little creative to fit this in here neatly, but do the best that you can each time. The neatness is what's going to help you get through all of this, okay? Now, we get negative 26.65. And if you're wondering, like, you know, gee, how's this all happening here? Just pull out your calculator and multiply these two things together. Let me show the decimal right there, 2.05 times negative 13. And we can still check it the exact same way. There we go. So now we can see here, if we check this part in our calculator, negative 26.65 divided by 2.05 gets us negative 13. And you can also see where I left it as plus negative when I rewrote it over here. That makes it easier to see that negative 13 plus negative 2 is indeed negative 15. So, yep, we've got the right answer. Last thing for the notes. Sometimes they're going to give you a story problem, and you're going to have to reason your way through it. 
here we have an old-fashioned problem here. To make a long-distance call, it costs 50 cents per call. And then it costs 85 cents per minute for each minute that you stay on the phone. And the last piece of information here, your call costs a total of $3.90. If you could please just use X, use X to represent the number of minutes. So on your problems, normally you would write down X equals, you know, and then you tell me what you want that variable to equal. Well, here they're telling you, please let X equal the number of minutes. Write and solve an equation to find how many minutes your call was. So if we make this equation and we solve for x, x will be the number of minutes. So let's work our way through this. And you know, in class, we definitely uh, took a lot more time to talk about different scenarios here. But if you pick up the phone and you call, you will instantly be called, or excuse me, you will instantly be charged 50 cents when that person picks up and says hello. But then the meter starts running, and you're going to be charged 85 cents per minute each minute. And so this one is going to happen again and again and again, and the 50 cents is a one-time fee. So if you don't mind, just, just make that little note uh, on, on you know page two of your notes right there. Right here, 50 cents, this is a one-time fee, but this 85 cents is going to be happening again and again, and then these two things will be added up to get you the total cost of the $3.90. So this one-time fee, we can just write it as 50 cents. But then we need to add on the 85 cents. Now, if this is a one-minute call, you add these up and you're done. But if this is a two-minute call, then, well, you'd have to add on another 85 cents. If it's a three-minute call, you'd have to add on three 85 cents. If it's a four-minute call, you'd have to add on four 85 cents. You see the pattern. There's no sense. That's a bad dad joke there. There is no sense to rewrite 85 cents over and over and over again. Instead, let's just multiply it by the number of minutes, okay? Now, instead of writing out minutes and putting that in parentheses, you know, how about we just replace the minutes with X? And we could have used an M, but they told us to use an X. And it's an unknown number of minutes. So we're just gonna set this right here beside it. That means 0 0.85 is gonna be multiplying the number of minutes, but we do know how much the entire phone call cost, $3.90. So it equals $3.90, and now we just go and solve. So 0 0.50 is the add number, and so we'll subtract 50 cents. And now we go to the other side of the equal sign, and we subtract 50 cents. This falls straight down. If this was a minus, you would drag this down because it's kind of setting up like a box situation here where this is gone now. And uh, this is a box situation where the only thing that's left over here on the right side is $3.40, right? So at this point, we have to go and get rid of the 85 cents times X, just divide it, divide it. Whoops, got a little messy there. And my computer is starting to have a slight issue here. Let me pause. And what you would see here is that we get exactly seven. So it would be a seven minute phone call. Okay. And I'm so sorry, I don't know why I wrote seven, three dollars and forty cents divided by uh, 85 cents is actually four. You can see it right there on my calculator. So let's just go through and fix that. I apologize. So to recap this lesson, change the subtraction sign into the plus the opposite, and you always get rid of your add subtract numbers first, and you just look at what they're doing and do the opposite to both sides of the equation.